Hey everybody, how's it going? I hope you're having a lovely day. A question that comes up in many of my AMAs is, Lewis, what games do you play and do you game? If so, or if not, then why? Great question. Back in the day, I used to play a lot of video games. I had Gran Turismo 2, Final Fantasy 9, Parasite Eve 2, Ace Combat, and I definitely enjoyed Zone of the Enders. I bought that just to get the Metal Gear Solid demo. I had Warcraft 1 and 2, and I did play Dota when Warcraft 3 came out. I don't really play games that much anymore. Oh, I definitely like Street Fighter Alpha 3. That was the best. And I used to play a Street Fighter 2 at the arcade at the community pool that was by my house. The, the problem with gaming nowadays is, is as follows. So since I like the Street Fighter series, I decided to pay for Street Fighter 5 because I had Street Fighter Alpha 3, I had Street Fighter 4. Let me try Street Fighter 5. And I buy it, and I'm plugging in my game controller excited to kick the crap out of everybody at work as I usually do when I play as my favorite secret weapon character, Sagat. So I go to choose Sagat and I notice that I can't choose him. I thought maybe, hmm, that's weird. So I realized that apparently you have to pay more money after you've already paid for the game to use Sagat. I thought, oh, this must be an error. Maybe I installed a trial version of the software and I forgot to enter the key or something that allows me to unlock the paid version that I just paid for because I bought the game and gave you money. And I looked it up and looked at my email, looked at the instructions. There's no code or anything to enter. I, I paid for the game, but now if I want to use the character that I was able to use for the past 15 years, anytime I go to the arcade and put 25 cents in, the character that I'd be able to use if I paid for Street Fighter Alpha 3 or Street Fighter 2 or Street Fighter 4, I now have to pay for again inside the game in Street Fighter 5. No, we're not doing that. Everybody that was about to play with rejoiced at this point because they all hate that I always play a Saget because every time I play a Saget, I win and I kick their ass. Not by a little bit, but like my you know, my health bar is all the way over here and they're just done. Or sometimes I'll let them win and I'll let my health bar get down to like here when they have all their health and then I'll still kill them. Everybody was so happy that I didn't get to play this cheap, cheap character anymore because when I play as him, I always win. But that wasn't okay to me because I had paid for that video game. When I paid for the video game, I expect that that's the last purchase for that video game. I do not expect that I have to, I expect that maybe I have to earn my way up to having Sagat. Maybe I have to unlock a certain score, but to pay to use him? Are you serious? Oh, apparently, after you pay for the game, that's not enough. You also have to do research in order to figure out whether you'll have to pay for more things inside the game after you've already bought it. And I know what a lot of people are gonna say, well, Lewis, why don't you just do your own research before you buy a game? Research is for work. Can I be honest about that? Figuring out whether or not I should buy a Jovi RE8500 or a Zamo ZMR6200C, that is research. I do research for work. Figuring out if I should buy screens from, you know, Kathy at PSI LCD or Roy at Wetron, that's that's research. I do that for work. I take risks on when, when I'm wiring money to random people to buy parts to computers that I'm not even supposed to be fixing. That's That's all work for me. Gaming is an oasis. Gaming is something away from that. Gaming is something away from the hustle and bustle of everyday life where I have to worry about whether I'm getting screwed or effed up the ass in some way by a corporate culture that just seems to want to extract as much value out of me as humanly possible in the sneakiest possible way. And if I don't want that inserted into my gaming experience. I don't want to have to worry about whether or not you're putting stuff in there that may make somebody more susceptible to a gambling addiction, which I've already had to deal with in the past, not going there. I don't want to deal with microtransactions. And above all, I don't want to have to pay money for a character I used to get. Can you imagine when you were a kid, if you're my age, you go to the rec room, you go to play Street Fighter 2, you put a quarter in, and only after you put the quarter in does it tell you that if you want to play as your favorite character, you have to put another quarter in for that character. That's not how any of this works. That's not how any of this was supposed to work. And that's not how it should work into the future. And then you go into the fact that many game consoles nowadays are made with ridiculous design flaws. I mean, just like stuff like Joy-Con Drift. Like when I was a kid, this was not a thing. My PlayStation 1, my PlayStation 2, none of the consoles I had had issues. My Game Boy did not have an issue where the joystick or where the D-pad would just randomly drift. But apparently that's a thing. And the manufacturer doesn't even want to deal with it. So now not only do I have to worry about whether or not I'm going to be screwed over by the company that sold me the video game who's going to try to nickel and dime me for all the internal features, I now have to do research on whether or not the gaming console that I choose to purchase is going to have design flaws that are not covered by the manufacturer that they don't have a fix for that's going to ruin my gaming experience. This doesn't even get into the issue of graphics card pricing. I mean, I remember... 10 years ago when I built a computer that I was going to use for video editing and everything for YouTube, I got what I thought was a pretty good graphics card at the time. It was an R9 280X and it could play many of the games I wanted. It was $300. I got it for about 260 bucks or so because I had a coupon code. So $260 got me a pretty kick-ass GPU. It was like mid, lower high-end or like mid, higher mid-end kind of GPU. And nowadays, if I want to get a good GPU, oh my God. Like I, I know we've dealt with inflation, 
But like, did we deal with a thousand percent inflation? Like when, when I look at the prices for graphics cards, it makes me very happy to completely opt out of modern gaming. I'm not paying $2,000 for a graphics card so that I can play a video game. That's just not happening, especially when I don't even know if after I pay $2,000 for the graphics card and pay $40 for the game, if the game is then going to want me to pay additional money to unlock characters and features afterwards. I am not a pinata, I am a repairman, and I am not going to be used as one so that I could play games when so many games have been created between 1988 to 2010 that I could literally play them every single day until I die and not be done playing five-star rated video games that gave me excellent entertainment. So the way I see it is this, I need the gaming industry as a whole, both the hardware manufacturers and the software manufacturers to convince me that it is safe to go back to gaming because I'm not playing that I'm, I'm not playing this game no pun intended I'm not playing the game of I am going to do research to figure out which game studios and which game companies don't take part in these practices because that turns gaming into work and gaming is not supposed to be work in my opinion gaming is supposed to be fun gaming is supposed to be an oasis away from all the other stressful garbage in the world and the moment it stops being that the moment i feel like i have to have my my antennae up or my radar on or i have to look over my shoulder just to make sure that i'm not being screwed by by some company or someone it's no longer a fun process for me it takes it out of it and honestly it just makes me not want to deal with it at all so i haven't gamed for years literally i did that i saw that i googled whether or not there was an error like like I installed a trial, I realized, no, for this video game, I actually do have to pay to use the other character that I want. And then I saw that this is something that's becoming more prevalent across the entire industry. And I just opted out. Like I figured, you know, I already have enough things going on in my life. I'm incredibly busy. There's a lot more that I can do for fun in my 30s than what I could do for fun between the age of, you know, six and 15, when you can't really go outside and start a business, see the people that you want to see, travel and stuff like that. So do I really need this? No, I just completely opted out of it altogether. And I'm waiting for the companies, both those who produce software and hardware, to convince me that it is safe to return to gaming. And I do believe it's their responsibility. I think it is on them, the responsibility and the accountability to convince me with their marketing that they are not going to try a nickel and dime me. And above all that, if I have an issue with their hardware, that they will actually address it and not do the Apple thing of saying a very small number of users until they get a class action lawsuit. The only way that many of these systems will change is if you opt out of not just a particular manufacturer, but just the entire system in the marketplace if they, if they treat you like crap. Because what it does is it prompts the people within those marketplaces to think to themselves, crap. People are really leaving. Like, I don't mean like a Reddit strike where they say they're going to go away for two days and they have this fantasy or illusion that that's actually going to make a difference, but they've actually just opted out completely. They're done. How do we get those people back? It'll cause them to swing the pendulum so far in the other direction that you'll actually start to see people that market based on, we don't screw you. And yeah, maybe I'm being delusional. Maybe that's not going to actually happen. Maybe enough people don't care, but it doesn't really matter to me. What matters are my own preferences. I am me. I care about my preferences and what I can live with. And I'm happy to live without playing video games anymore, to be honest with you. There's enough cool games that were made between 1988 and like 2010 that I could pretty much sit here, quit my job, play those games for the rest of my entire life, and be happy. So why would I opt into this modern ecosystem where it is expected that I get nickel and dimed for everything after I pay for the product? I don't want to support that. I don't want to give the vote that that is okay. So opt out works for me. It's just not fun for me anymore. There are so many games where I'll see people on forums that are saying, you know, there's this microtransaction, there's this thing hidden behind this. And it's like, well, I, I don't want to Google for this. I don't want to have to research this. I don't want to have to go through stuff. Like when I was a kid, I had the time to read EGN and EGM and Game Pro and stuff like that. And I even got a letter published in one of them. But as an adult, nah, just stop that assistance to treat you like crap. That's what I do. Again, I can't be sure whether or not you are one of the companies that's going to hide something like that inside the game. And I don't have the time or the inclination to find out. I'm open to you convincing me, meaning it is on the front of the box in large font. That is your marketing material. When you play the commercial, it is actually a part of the commercial for the game that there are no microtransactions. I don't have to pay to unlock stuff. It's just going to work. And you're not going to try to make me a gambling addict. Until you do that, eh, I'm fine without games. Or I'll just keep playing the stuff I played before. I actually... I think I should probably replay Final Fantasy IX again at some point. I really love that game. The story of that game in general, I think, is, it, it says a lot about the search for purpose and meaning, and I think it's an argument against nihilism as a philosophy entirely, which I think just makes it an absolutely awesome game. Maybe replay Parasite Eve 2. That was kind of fun. Had some good music, too. Anyway, that's it for today, and as always, I hope you learned something. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye now.